Until I started writing them, it was almost impossible to find a good review of the Nelson A. Rockefeller Empire State Plaza that dominates downtown Albany, New York. Built between 1965 and 1978, New York Magazine called it a Dali-esque nightmare. Others criticized it because it was built by a megalomaniacal governor. It pushed aside some very earnest slums. It had cost overruns, it had delays, and a little touch of corruption. Other people think that the ESP just looks weird. The idea for the plaza was inspired when Governor Rockefeller was embarrassed showing Albany to a Netherlands princess. He, with his modern tastes and favorite architect, Wallace Harrison, the UN building, Rockefeller Center, Lincoln Center, laid out a grand scheme to give Albany its visual identity. For better or for worse, it worked. The Empire State Plaza is a compilation of modernist buildings that gesture towards the old French Renaissance Capitol building on the northern end. That old Capitol building was built in the 1800s by many famous architects, including the Beaux-Arts trained H. H. Richardson, whose heavy, earth-colored masonry buildings just dripped with detail and spawned the adjective Richardsonian. You know you are a great architect when your name becomes an adjective. Still, that building too had many scandals and delays. The Empire State Plaza appeals to me because it was built with a vision towards the future that spoke of great optimism. In many ways, it could have been a set on the original Star Trek series. In plan, it is very classical, with strong centrality and balance on both sides. In elevation, it is very modern. On the west, small towers appear as rising glass wedges suspended on stone spines, with the repetitive monumentality of stone heads on Easter Island. On the east, the Corning Tower mimics the glass skin of the smaller towers on the west, but with a blade-like slenderness that reaches even higher. The affectionately and derisively named building The Egg, an assembly space, punctuates an otherwise rectilinear composition. And the New York State Museum on the south balances with modernity the mass of the neo-French Renaissance Capitol building on the north. Bowing to the severe Albany winters, the outdoor plaza covers underground passages, but these dark tunnels become the default means of travel, even in good weather. As a result, the outdoor plaza is windy, barren, and devoid of life, as often happens to modern landscapes. It takes many carefully planned events to keep the plaza populated. I think its real appeal comes from the same source as an earlier form of modernism known as Italian Futurism. If you look at the drawings of Antonio Santilia from 1914, you will see a vision of a city as a pulsating machine with elevated trains and tunnels and towers. Santilia was a young architect best known for these drawings. His life was cut short in World War I. His vision is perhaps realized in the 1927 silent epic Metropolis by Fritz Lang. All this art and architecture was intertwined with worker-oriented politics, nationalism, and revolution. And this led to many nasty things in Europe just a bit later. So then the design of the Rockefeller Empire State Plaza is akin to a descendant of Italian futurism known as Italian fascist architecture. And only I will mean that as a compliment. Take Aor, E-U-R, Exposizione Universale Roma. The neighborhood developed by Mussolini in the 1930s. Both ESP and EUR were built as prophetic, powerful propaganda, saying that our best days lie not behind us, but in front of us. Both ESP and EUR transformed imperial monumentality of past styles into modern materials and forms. They are so alike. Can you tell which was built in Albany and which was built in Rome? ESP and EUR were postmodern before the phrase was even coined. History repeats itself, especially architectural history. And I cannot say if EUR 
had any direct influence over America's mid-century architects, but sometimes it makes you wonder. I will leave it to others to compare the psychology of Nelson Rockefeller with that of Benito Mussolini or any of the great ruling urban planners of the past. But nearly all of them, dictators, governors, emperors, Robert Moses, whatever, had to amass power and often destroy before they built, and smart architects were lurking close by. Violent despots of the recent past make it hard for us to enjoy their buildings, but just give it time. I've never had anyone come to me and say, I would have enjoyed the pyramids more if only the pharaohs weren't so mean. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex.